Translation. Thus being questioned by Maharaj Yudhisthira, Mahatma Vidura gradually described everything that he personally experienced except the news of the annihilation of the Yadu dynasty. <clears throat> Jadu dynasty, when Krishna was present, the family members were about uh, ten millions. Uh, this is Krishna. Everything is wonderful. He married 16,108 uh, wives. And each wife had ten children. And each child begot another ten children. In this way, the Jadukul was a very big family. Hmm. <coughs> so they were destroyed. There are two comments on this point. Why uh, Jadukul was destroyed by Krishna plan? Uh, one comment is that if they would continue to leave, then uh, the same misconception that uh, a Brahmin is born in the Brahmin family they would continue to speak that we are also gods because we are born of God's family, Krishna's family. Just like in India there is a class, they call themselves a Nityananda Vamsa, descendants of Lord Nityananda. But that does not actually happen. And another comment is, that all these members of Jaduku, they appeared in the Jaduku just to uh, enhance the opulence of Krishna, but they came from different heavenly planets to help Krishna in his incarnation. Hmm. Just like a big man, wherever he goes, uh, there are many others also go there to help him. When a king goes somewhere, the king does not go alone. He goes with his secretaries, with his military commanders and so many other companions. So these Yudhukulas were like that. They came to help Krishna's Dila first time within this material world. So some of them were born as sons of Krishna, some of them as grandsons, as great-grandsons. And Krishna did not want to leave them behind. Krishna was planning 
to go back to his Vaikuntha here, Vrindavan planet. Uh, so he did not like uh, that they should remain. They should also go back. Uh, now, to go back means they must meet death after because otherwise it is unnatural. So, and who can kill them? Nobody can kill them. There is also another point that family of Krishna, there is no power in the whole world that anybody could kill them. So the Krishna planned that they should be killed among themselves by fighting. So as another lesson is that if we fight amongst ourselves, even we belong to the family of Krishna, we are doing. This is the instance of Jodhapur. Although they belong to Krishna's family directly, still because they fought amongst themselves, they were all banished, vanquished. So this was not a very palatable incident. So Vidura, when he was asked by Maharaj Yudhishthi about the family members of Jodhapur, he did not describe it because they are very thickly related as family members. So it would be a great shock to the Pandava that the Jodhapur, descendants of the Jodhapur, have been annihilated in such an unpalatable way. So he did not describe. Jathāna bhūtaṁ kramaśa ittyukta dharmarājena sarvaṁ tat samavarna. He described everything. Bina jodhukulak śayam. Bina. Bina means without. Without the incident, how the jodhukul was destroyed by fighting among themselves. Nanna priyam dhudvishaham nidāṁ śayam upasthitam nāvedayat śākaruna dukkitāṁ dashtam akkama. He did not describe because he did not like also to see the Pandavas would be sorry. He went back to his home after so many years and they were receiving them and at the at that time, Vidura uh, did not like to see them uh, aggrieved on account of this incident. Kaschit kalam athava asit satkita devavat sukham bhratu jeshta sriyaskit sarvesam sukham avahan. Vidura left his home for good. It is not that he has again come back to live with his family members, no. His only purpose was that his elder brother, Dhritarashtra, was rotting there. He lost everything. He lost his kingdom, lost his sons, grandsons, and everything. Still he could not uh, give up the so-called material happiness. He was, of course, these Pandavas, they were treating Maharaj and Dhritarashtra and his wife Gandhari very gorgeously as the head of the family, but he was not the same that uh, he intrigued so much uh, difficulties and plots against the Pandavas. And there was big fight, Kurukshetra, in which he lost everything. Still he was living under their care for some material comfort. Uh, is, this was very shameful affair. So Vidura was very much uh, uh, attracted, attached to Maharaj Dhritarashtra. Therefore, Bhratur jeshtasya sriyaskit. Bhratu means brother and jeshta means elder. 
So actually Vidur went there for the benefit of Vidurāsta. Uh, Therefore, kaścit kālam atha avāsīt, he decided to live uh, at home along with the family member for some time. Avāsīt, kṛta, sat kṛta deva vatsukham. He was living uh, just like in the opulence of demigods because they are all nephews. Pandavas were so well behaved, cultured, devotees, and Vidur was devotee. So he was uh, treated just like Devavat, godly. Uh, uh, that is required. Uh, just like whenever I go anywhere, you know, they treat me uh, very nicely. I live uh, very comfortably. Uh, similarly, Vidura was uh, treated by the Pandavas to live very comfortably. Jevabhat, just like godly uh, standard. But he did not live there for getting some material comfort. Uh, his aim was that this poor man, Dhritarashtra, my elder brother, he has not yet uh, been lessened. There, what is the value of this material comforts? He was living shamelessly. So he wanted to instruct him, and thus he lived there for some time. Kanchit kalam athavasit satkita deva vasukham bhratu jeshtha sasyaskit sarvisam sukhamav. So although he specially lived in the palace for the benefit of his elder brother, still, uh, so long he lived, it was a very pleasing time for all of them, because he was living not as a dull or dumb man. He was speaking about Krishna. Therefore everyone was feeling very happy. Saintly person like Vidura must be treated as well as a denizen from heaven. As well as a denizen from him. Yes. If any saintly person comes at home, formerly this was the system. In our childhood, we have seen uh, many saintly persons used to come, and my father used to receive them very nicely. Uh, some of them, still the system is if you go to any Indian village, and um, I mean to say those are sannyasi, saintly person. They are received very well. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was uh, touring in South India, so many Brahmins were coming to invite him. That is the system. Uh, he hasn't got to uh, bother for his food or shelter any place. That is the system. So Vidura, he was a saintly person. He was received by the Pandavas and treated just like denizens. In those days, denizens of heavenly planets used to visit homes like that of Maharaj Yudhishthira, and sometimes persons like Arjuna and others used to visit our planets. We get information. Arjuna also went to the heavenly planets and person from heaven, when there are some big jaggas, sacrifice, and they used to come and visit Indra, Chandra. And sometimes person like him. Narada is a spaceman who can travel unrestrictedly, not only within the material universe, but also in the spiritual universe. Whenever he wanted, he could go. He can go, he is still living, not that. Uh, even Narada used to visit the palace of Maharaj this day and what to speak of other celestial demigods. It is only the spiritual culture of the people concerned that makes interplanetary travel possible. Even in the present body, 
Maharaj Yudhishthi therefore received Vidura in the manner of a reception offered to the demigods. <coughs> Uh, this example means demigods were visiting. Uh, Mahatma Vidura had already adopted the renounced order of life, and therefore he did not return to his paternal palace to enjoy some material comfort. He accepted out of his own mercy that was offered to him by the Maharaj Yudhishthira. But the purpose of living in the palace was to deliver his too much materially attached elder brother, Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra lost all his state and descendants in the fight with Maharaj Yudhishthira, and still, due to his sense of helplessness, he did not uh, feel ashamed to accept the charity and hospitality of Maharaj Yudhishthira. Suppose you create some enemy, always fought with your enemy. So if you accept his hospitality and live there thinking that I am living very comfortably, it is not very good sense. <clears throat> On the part of Maharaj Yudhishthira, it was quite in order to maintain his uncle in a befitting manner, but acceptance of such magnanimous hospitality by Yudhishthira was not at all desirable. He accepted it because he thought that there was no other alternative. Vidura particularly came to enlighten Dhritarashtra and to give him a leap to the higher status of spiritual cognition. It is the duty of the enlightened soul to deliver the fallen ones. And Vidura came to that reason. But talks of spiritual enlightenment are so repressing that while in instructing Dhritarashtra, Vidura attracted the attention of all the members of the family, and all of them took pleasure in hearing him uh, patiently. This is the way of spiritual realization. The message should be heard attentively, and if spoken by realized soul, it will act on the dormant heart of the conditioned soul, and by continuously hearing, one can attain the perfect stage of self-realization. Therefore, śravaṇaṁ uh, is very essential. śravaṇaṁ kīrtanaṁ viṣṇu smaranaṁ pādaṣiṁ. So in all our centers, this process will be followed. We have got now so many books. Simply. If we read books, uh, <clears throat> our Yogeshna Pro is very enthusiastic to read books. So everyone should read books and others should hear. Uh, that is very essential, Savana. Uh, the more you hear, and uh, we have got so many books, uh, and, and whatever is already published, just like we are uh, describing uh, one verse daily. At least there are so many verses already in stock, you can go on speaking for fifty years. These books are already published. You can go on. There will be no one of stock. So this practice should be adopted. Don't waste time. As much as possible, try to hear about this transcendental subject matter and Bhagavatam, yad Vaishnavāraṁ priya. It is uh, stated that this was Bhagavatam is very, very dear to the Vaishnavas, to the devotees. <coughs> In Vrindavan you will find uh, they are always reading Simad Bhagavatam. That is their life and soul. Uh, <coughs> so now we have got already six volumes, and further, how many, eight volumes are coming? So you'll have enough stock. So you should read. Savanam Kīrtam and Vishnu. That is the main business. That is pure devotional service. Because we cannot devote twenty-four hours in hearing and chanting, therefore we have extended our activities, program activities in so many ways. Otherwise, Śrīmad Bhāgavatam is so nice. If you practice anywhere, any condition, simply by reading Śrīmad Bhāgavatam, 
he will be happy. Uh, so adopt this practice and make your spiritual life perfect more and more. Thank you very much.